the voice of the Cowboys and one of the great ones. All time, Brad Sham joins us on 365 Sports. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke. As we come to you the day after Scotty Scheffler wins another green jacket. And they celebrate Vern Lundquist. And Brad Sham, as much as anyone else, can discuss the great Vern Lundquist because he's worked with him before. Brad, thank you very much for your time. I always thought you, uh, Lundquist among others, less is more. And we seem like we see a lot less of that now in sports broadcasting. Is that what makes him so special? Well... That I don't think that alone, Smokey, is what made him special, although I absolutely agree. He may be the last great practitioner of it. Pat Summerall, to me, is one of the very best. <clears throat> but uh, just think about his most recent <clears throat> excuse me, days working the SEC football mm-hmm. games, and the, that less is more. I think that's what television play-by-play is supposed to be. you got a picture. You, you don't need the play-by-play guy to do much more than drive the bus. You need the analyst to tell you what the heck happened. And uh, he he got that more than anyone. But that, to me, is not his greatness. His greatness is that um, his innate knowledge combined with his preparation made him more than most the right man to step up to big moments. That's why I I frequently say when asked, uh, I, I just don't think, I don't believe uh, in uh, the universe uh, having accidents. And, you know, anybody can have a really memorable call fall into their lap. Almost anybody could have two. When you look at the things that he, and I said this to a newspaper reporter in Dallas last week, if you, when you make a list of the things that he had uh, the opportunity to describe from Jackie Smith's drop in the end zone on the Cowboys radio network in, in uh, January of 76 to... Uh, or 70, uh, no, not 76, 78. Um, from there all the way through Christian Leitner and uh, the uh, uh, stuff that he had at the uh, Winter Olympics in skating and and uh, all of the golf moments, which are some of the most famous, of course, and then some of the big SEC moments. When you look at all of those, the only way in my mind that one person gets all of those is that God says there's only one guy I can put in charge of that. And uh, I, I just don't think it's an accident. Brad, um, you, you've known him for a very long time. What would you say uh, early on when you, you met him was your, your process? What did you like – observe like do you do you take notes when you have guys like that especially as a younger broadcaster what did you do like when around Vern Lundquist and going oh crap he that was really good well I Paul I'll tell you it's funny I mean we met each other in the early 70s uh, but we started working together in the middle of the 76 football season and um, by then Vern had been on the Cowboy broadcast I don't know 15 16 years and uh, I of course thought I knew everything about everything <laughs> And it took me uh, one game sitting next to him, looking at the same field he was looking at, listening to him and not seeing some of the things he was describing. Uh, It took me one game to say, oh, uh, you better keep your mouth shut and your ears open and figure out uh, what he's doing and how you can be more like it. Um, So, you know, to me, some of the greatest mentors, and I I think I've had two, uh, Vern and Frank Gleaver. To me, sometimes the best mentors do not intend to mentor you. They don't set out to do that, but they kind of show you the way. And so from the standpoint of what you're asking about, yeah, I mean, I just sat next to him, listened to what he said, looked at what he was looking at, 
tried to understand how he worked and uh, how he did what he did. And uh, after a little while, I figured out that some of the things that were his strengths were not my strengths, and I should not try to do those, but I could do the things that I could do more like he did them. And uh, that's really just a question of exposure and experience. I, I I believe Hanson told me this, but I also saw you mention this, that he did not have notes when he was abroad, when he did Channel 8, that he could do a sports cast basically without anything in front of him. Never saw him, never saw him have a note. And there's a, I, I, I reposted a, a thing on Twitter X that um, somebody had put up that was the best example I could ever see, which was, um, of a training camp report in Thousand Oaks the day after the Cowboys traded Dwayne Thomas to the San Diego Chargers for Billy Parks and Mike Montgomery. And Vern is standing out at the side of the practice field in Thousand Oaks, and I'll bet it was a four-minute report or maybe a three-minute report, which included his personal observations which he delineated. He said, this is what I think after he told you the hard facts. And there's not a note and there's not a script. And I'll promise you in uh, 1970 or whenever that was, 71, that uh, there was no uh, prompter. Mm -hmm. There was no cue guy. There was Vern and his camera guy. And um, he, he, I never saw him write a script or have a note or he, but he just was as good as he is now. He's been that good for 50 years. What do you think yesterday and even the lead up to the last weekend at Augusta meant to him? Oh, I knew it was going to be emotional for him. I texted him uh, uh, a few weeks ago when the announcement was made that this was going to be it. Now I knew that was coming because he told me, he told me that he and the CBS executives had, you know, they, first they winnowed him down to, uh, the PGA and the Masters, and then eventually it was just the Masters. So they knew it was coming. And um, I, I texted him when they made that announcement. And I said, are you okay with this? And he answered me with a list of his physical ailments. He said, yeah, it's about time. Um, he said, I'm 83. I walk with a cane. I've got, uh, you know, a CPAP machine and, you know, partial diabetes. And, yeah. Mm. So, and that didn't even get into all the back surgeries he's had. So um, I knew it was coming, and he knew it was coming. He had time to prepare for it. But I also um, knew, because I know him, how emotional it would be. I think I texted him early in the week of the Masters. Oh, I know it was early in the week of the Masters because he and his wife Nancy had their uh, wedding anniversary uh, Monday or Tuesday. So I texted him, happy anniversary, and I said, I know this is going to be an emotional week for you. Try not to cry. <laughs> and he almost made it. He almost yep. made it. He he, uh, he got choked up there at the end, and uh, that's just so completely understandable. The, the this is not just a place and an event that has meant so much to him, but um, you know, more than fifty years in, he's now done. He's retired, and his body, I think, and I believe me. Smokey, I identify with this. His body is saying, let's take a break. His mind is saying, oh, we got this. We can mm -hmm. do this a while longer. And that is, I think, not just in our business, but the older I get, the more I'm convinced that it is, it is the uh, ultimate, eventual, and um, unavoidable battle that we all have coming. When, when it's just time to not do the thing that you most love doing. And it's coming for all of us. So um, he, he, but, uh, you know, I know what it meant to him. It meant everything to him. And then you hit that little rush when, when Jim did that last uh, toss and the last sign off. And that's the last time anyone's going to say on a live event, uh, here's Vern Lundquist. And that that has to uh, hit you in the face. If you were having, and I know that obviously he's your friend, so uh, don't uh, let that um, 
you know, if you're still going to pick it. But if you were having like a fantasy draft of, man, I need a broadcaster for this event, any, any event, how high in the draft would he go? Oh, he'd be, you know, in the top. He, he, he depend on the event, but he'd certainly be in the top five, and he might be uh, in the top three. I mean, Frank Lieber was was really, really good at that. Um, and, and I'm talking about versatility, smoothness, easy to listen to. Um, there, there's some other guys. You know, like like Bob Costas is yep. a, a, just an enormously talented guy, and especially if it's baseball, but not exclusively. After a while, you kind of get the feeling, and you know, I'm, I'm, we're not, Bob and I don't hang out, but I've known him for a very long time, and I consider us friendly. And uh, I think after a while, when you listen to Bob, you kind of get the idea that you're being either taught or preached to or spoken to by someone who believes that he is better at this than you. And um, Vern and Frank were absolutely not that way. Pat Summerall would be very high on the list. And, uh, and for me, I think Joe Buck would be high on that list because I don't think Joe talks down to you at all. And he's got a great sense of humor and he's, uh, very versatile and can do a lot of different things. And I, again, personal friend, so I'm uh, somewhat biased. But but Vern would be in the top three and maybe uh, the top five and maybe in the top three. You mentioned versatile. You have done soccer, baseball, the Olympics, and of course you're known. Smokey, excuse me, I got to interrupt. I, I did forget uh, Vin Scully. Yeah. Who, yeah, yeah. who t- for me, is the all-time best sportscaster period he's so well known for doing the dodgers people forgot that he did the nfl he did a lot of different sports and i've many times said if you're making a list of the top 25 sportscasters of all time vin scully is one through 15 (laughs) and and the next the next nine spots are blank and then everybody else starts fighting at number 25. That's, a great that's how point. good Scully, Brad, Scully I, was. Okay, I, sorry to interrupt. No, no that's I, okay. I can't agree with that more just because I watched him do a spring training game one time, and I was I was like, he is talking about a guy whose number is 94 right yeah. now, like it's his grandson, and he knows all of these things about him. And I thought, holy cow, this dude's not even going to make the roster. And right. Vin is talking about him like he's an everyday player with the yeah. knowledge of that, it was unreal. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Smoke. No, that's that's okay. You 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 mentioned versatility, with what all of he did, not just pro football, but also, of course, as you mentioned, all those SEC games and everything else. You have been Major League Baseball, MLS, uh, Major League Soccer, Olympics, the NFL. You did an incredibly popular talk show uh, on KRLD, among other things. Uh, how difficult is that? When most people are kind of pigeonholed, and I see where John Sterling's about to retire after 50 years or so with the Yankees, it's not easy to have that ability, is it, to, to be able to do more than one specific type broadcast? I don't, I don't want to come off wrong answering the question, but I think that Vern would tell you the same thing. I think Frank would tell you the same thing. I think uh, I think uh, uh, Pat would have absolutely told you the same thing. I think Joe would. Uh, it, it, it's not anything that you think of as difficult. Now there may be some differences from sport to sport. Mm-hmm. One might be more difficult than another. Preparation might be completely different. Um, there's there's challenges to doing an event that you know almost no one is watching or listening to that in their own way equals something that you know the whole world is watching and listening to. But, but the question about it, is it difficult to do a bunch of different things, uh, I, I never found that difficult. I just really enjoyed that. I, I, uh, as you said, I've done a lot of different things, and I've, I always enjoyed every, every single one of them, even ones that I knew I was terrible at and didn't do very well because – I didn't know anything. I did one year about uh, 16 years ago for a variety of reasons. I wound up doing uh, seven NASCAR races on direct TV. 
now what you, what I know about NASCAR, it, you could get a thimble and <laughs> fill it up, and you got twice as much as I knew. But uh, but it was a challenge. It was new. It was different, and uh, and I enjoyed it very much. So I, I can't say I can't say that. It, I think if you can do it, you can do it. And if you know you can't, then you find what you can do, and you kind of stick to that. So can you share the story about bowling for dollars with those who don't know that story about Vern Lundquist? Well, yeah, and, the, and as I said to the uh, newspaper writer, um, the thing I like best about it is the way he enjoyed telling it. One of the best things about Vern is that he, he, he doesn't have pretensions about it. He's, he loves to laugh at himself. So he this is how he tells the story. He was at Channel 8 in Dallas. And his goal in life was to be a full-time network television sportscaster. Didn't matter which network. Didn't matter doing what. He wanted to be a full-time guy. And en route to that... Uh, one year, ABC hired him to do the A&M Texas football game, uh, which was played on Thanksgiving and, and maybe at night in um, College Station. So he's driving back with his friend and spotter, Joe Cash, who was his spotter on the Cowboy broadcast. And uh, he's and he's wearing his you know, ABC blazer. He's so proud of it. He's like the yellow one with the big ABC patch on the uh, pocket, the breast pocket. He's not taking that off. So they stop in Fairfield for gas. And in those days, of course, uh, a- any gas station stop was full service. Doesn't matter what time or where you are. So he pulls in and they're sitting there and, and he notices as the guy comes out to, uh, wash the windows and check the tires and go around. He notices, and Smokey, you know what this is like, Paul, you do too. You, When someone's looking at you like they think they know who you are, you can tell. And so this guy's looking at him, and he keeps looking as he's making away, his way slowly around the car. Now, this does not displease Vern. <laughs> and so he's sitting there and the guy comes around and he's going to come all the way back around to the driver's window. So Vern kind of straightens himself up and pulls that jacket straight and throws that pocket with the ABC patch out on it. What I said to Kevin Sherrington of the morning news was he was in his full peacockery (laughs) and, and he's sitting up straight and tall and the guy comes and rolls down the window and the, and the guy says, uh, Excuse me, are you, are you who I think you are? And and he can't be prouder. And he very um, humbly says, yes, yes, I am. He's just done his first network television football game. He is flying high. Yes, I am, he says. And the guy turns around and yells over his shoulder at his partner, hey, Rudy, come on out here. It's that bowling for dollars fella. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> oh, and he. What I love about him is that he loves to tell the story. It, it, he 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 bursts his own bubble, and he completely understood how to maintain perspective. And maybe that was one of the things that helped him uh, do that. Brad, uh, it's always great to hear you, man. Uh, with what you do, and uh, it, maybe after the draft, we'll fill in uh, some of the holes of the Cowboys. Got a lot of them, right? This is uh, an intriguing lead-up. Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. Hey, Brad, I, you know, if you get to – if you walk around, uh, just tell them trade down, get picks. Well, okay. Hey, look, they, they know where the players are. The mm-hmm. problem is having the right picks. I, I, I'll be interested to see if they trade down, but that's what, which is what you just said, uh, because they I think they would love to have – something in the fourth round or failing that an extra one in the third round. And it, that will depend Paul on, on how uh, things fall with the way their board is set up. But if there's a guy, if they get down there near the bottom and 
uh, near their pick, and it looks like they they think, based on their intelligence, that uh, a guy who they kind of like at 24 might be there at 33, then that's when you do that because someone's going to want to come up and get something that's there. So I'm, I'm with you. That A lot of times I don't like to do that, especially now when you have a fifth with first round pick, you've got him for five years, but their needs are so plentiful that this year I'm, I'm with you. I'd be in favor of that. If the deal is right, you don't do mm. it just to do it, but if the deal is right. Thank you, Brad. We appreciate it. Hall of Famer okay. and Brad Sham, voice of the Cowboys with us, reflecting on the career and got he, how he started working, what those days were like with Vern Lundquist, who yesterday did his last 40th appearance and as a broadcaster at Augusta National. One of the stars of the greatest golf movie ever made, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, that's yeah. no, absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. Hey, I got a note here. Well, 